All right, this next React is from Mike Tannick. And this one's been shared with me quite a bit. Uh, it's called The Toxic Community Minefield That Threatens Its Future, Star Citizen. Um, so I'm assuming they're talking about the community and their toxicity. And, and we've talked about that quite a bit on this channel. So I'm interested to see what somebody I, who I don't know kind of feels about the subject. The term white knight describes a range of frankly yep, right odd away. behaviors that is typically perceived as not being a good thing. Much like the knights in fairy tales who come riding to the rescue of some very flawed, damaged, or Any white distressed in chat? person or noun, whatever their chosen thing to champion happens to be, they will fight for their honor with blessed gleaming armor, stout shield, and a sword that sings, and defend all facets that need defending, even the indefensible, or die trying. Their morals are above reproach and only those that have something to fear or hide can ever speak out against them. Any attacks on the noun of their affection are to be dismissed. For how can a simple, common peasant possibly understand something so complex as honor and the elevated intellect required for the great sacrifice which they make? Now, pluck that character out of the storybook and drop them squarely into the midst of gaming. I mean, all of gaming. This video is not intended to attack these characters, but to actually understand the behavior, which I found to be surprisingly complex after a bit of research. Who is and isn't a knight can be subjective, so don't take offense if you happen to simply support the game and defend it from a lot of the stale and ill-informed opinions that get spat out of PC gaming and their followers. Tons of people support the game. I play it myself and support it because it's fun. But like all things, there are some serious criticisms to be had. White knights exist in most facets of society. Okay, so so far he's going from the, like, uh, the overall gaming perspective. Anywhere there is something under attack, which is and everywhere they are to be found. Let's look a bit at why this happens. I'm going to be picking on Star Citizen for the most part since it is the most recent game I have played where it exists and is kind of unfortunately well known for this kind of behavior. But I'll draw yeah. on some examples from elsewhere as well. I'm also going to be painting in some broad strokes since this sounds I don't like have an time to planet referee documentary. every internet no, fight about Star Citizen. <laughs> so I'll acknowledge that there are some exceptions. He doesn't have an English accent, okay? Do what I'm saying. For in the great savannas of Africa. For those that don't know, Star Citizen is a somewhat controversial sci-fi game that has its roots of development reaching as far back as 2010 when it went into pre-production. To understand White Knights, you have to understand Star Citizen's non-traditional and endless development cycle. It had its official reveal in 2012, the same year it launched to Kickstarter which was wildly successful. Kickstarter games, particularly Kickstarter MMOs, have a horrible reputation for overselling, under-delivering, and never finishing. Games like Chronicles of Illyria, or should I say the idea for the game of Chronicles Didn't of Illyria never came to fruition and turned into a public spectacle where the developer was essentially accused of scamming, defrauding, and other bad words. It, it was bad. There are a ton of other... Can can we okay realistically guys i know we're come from a community that's more on the skeptical side of star citizen can we really compare star citizen and chronicles of illyria can can we really do that i i'm not sure that that's fair because did chronicles of illyria ever deliver anything that was playable like, have CIG delivered, you know, even remotely what they said was possible? No. But can you deliver, but can you compare it to a game that, like, never released anything? I, I don't think so, but okay. There are examples to choose from, He's but going suffice to. to say, Kickstarters are very touchy sub. Define playable? I, come on. Okay? Like, listen, Star Citizen is not a good experience but it's playable hey danny guys everybody wave to danny reynolds who is 
used to work with the mission guys and now uh, is mainly focused on squadron, right? So how you doing, Danny? How you been? Glad to see you. Miss you. We used to make fun of Luke together and now he's gone. Objects in gaming. It's an interesting mix of developers who and they just both used to make fun of me having to submit to the <laughs> pressures and constraints of having a publisher. Developers no, who there. have no clue how to actually make what they are selling, and developers who aren't developers. Star Citizen seemed to buck that trend, blasting past their initial Kickstarter goal and eventually reaching the stretch goal of five and a half million. But as it turns out, that five and a half million is about one percent of the total funding raised by the developer cloud imperium games or sig and their maverick leader the guy who is responsible for creating it all chris roberts more on that in a minute now a decade after its reveal there is a playable alpha which in all honesty is a lot of fun I got in on it by picking up okay. one of the cheapest ships, the Aurora, for you, $45. A bit expensive for an early Prams access game, but I've paid more for some really dicked and unfun they games. Have given four Selling ships in the or channel. ship packages is another way SIG makes its money. And this is where we start to see the unity of the Star Citizen players start to fracture. So just an Aurora backer, pretty good. To way oversimplify it, Libertard, Sega's I'll post the link put a to the number video at the of end, concept yeah. ships up for pledge, or a churched up way of saying that ship doesn't exist yet, but they are working on it. Some of the ships turned out to be pretty cool, some turned out to be awful, but the trouble here is that when you're selling concept ships that don't exist yet to the internet, you can't calmly or quietly state that they can't be flown until they actually exist. You have to smash people over the head with it or else. This happens. Fuck. Sig got a warning from the UK's Advertising Standards Agency. It has no teeth. It doesn't harm Sig materially in any way, but it says, hey, make it clear that you can't fly concept ships in game yet until after they exist. If you're sensing my sarcasm, it's because you can find this whopper of a rebuke smack dab in the middle of the salt bog of r slash star citizen refunds. A subreddit awash with people clamoring for Sig's blood and Chris Roberts' head for any not just Sig's blood, but any content creator. I have been stated that I I am a CIG employee on this on this fucking Reddit, dude. This Reddit is the most toxic cesspool of just ridiculousness I've ever seen in my life. They believe that I work at this company. Me, me, that I work at the company and that I'm a shill. Any number of it's past the, it's slights, the both real and funniest shit of all time. Well, I'll leave it at that. Do the I? The responses here made everyone look bad. Maybe. People who cheer for any small inconvenience that happens to the Star Citizen team. Like, if you reported that Chris Roberts got a flat tire on the way to work, there would be much celebration and embracing and solidarity with a little bit of moisture. It was a very Karen-y moment for the anti-Star Citizen movement. Sig and Chris Roberts, on the other hand, have not done anything to help themselves here. They do push the limits of integrity and honesty in fundraising. They do. turn around and pat themselves on the back for being so independent of big mean publishers while people with legitimate grievances get trampled underneath a very carefully planned advertising campaign making them feel like they aren't being heard so that is a glimpse of the rabid dark knight community see r slash star citizen refunds for more complaining around star citizen i don't Agreed. They do have some of the best memes there, though. I don't want to make light of it too much because, as we are about to see, there are many, many problems with the game and how it is being developed. I spoke a bit about Chris Roberts, but who is he and why is there such a cult of personality built up around him? That if is you don't the most know, cursed image of, of all time. personality is what it sounds like, where a group Look of people it. become devoted to someone's persona or ideology, etc. Charles Manson is always the go-to example, but there are a lot less murdery 
examples like Bill Murray, Ellen DeGeneres, Donald Trump, Barack Obama all have a core of people who bask in their existence. Being their biggest fans and most ardent defenders, even with the most glaring of evidence about some wrongdoing, they will explain away, Elon downplay, Musk, yep. or outright dismiss legitimate criticism as conspiracy, uh, lies. You I get run. the picture. You know the type. But uh, how did Chris Roberts, a guy all here making a no game, one has I... ever heard of, get the same kind of status as all those famous people? I've never been accused of having a small vision. Well, vision, I guess. What Chris has planned for Star Citizen is admittedly nerd porn. It is a grand idea of a universe even its biggest critics could get lost in. An MMO that is- That haircut is so bad, enough for me to ask for a refund. Listen, man, you are almost definitely balding and probably have worse hair than him. Please. See, Chris has better hair than I do. D don't- don't ever like come on man you know you i know you're projecting i know you're projecting. It's so immersive and realistic where you can truly be free to be any character you want to be where each decision counts and has a butterfly i like effect, see our hair a working player built economy in other words a modern successor to eve online but with more stuff Star Citizen is to be the magnum opus to Chris's game developing career. And if you look at games he has developed with 2020 eyes, they kind of seem like he was practicing to make Star Citizen. He was a programmer and producer for the Wing Commander and Strike Commander games in the 1990s. While they obviously didn't age well, at the time they were pretty well Bro, they did age well. They're still fun received, today. And there is still a community for those games today, which is a really important which means they aged well. Press of achievement. He also created the game Freelancer in 2003, which was a sequel to an earlier game, Star Lancer, which came out in 2000. Freelancer is a space flight simulator with trading, combat, it had more than two hours worth of in-game cutscenes, and was also generally well received. The problem with the game was that it made some big promises before Freelancer launch just felt that unfinished. didn't materialize in its final release like the dynamic world where the universe changes due to events not influenced by the player. The boiled down version was because Microsoft. So it went something like this. Freelancer had a lot of hype. It's because it, it, it was announced it was, in 1997 right, yeah. and was to have a two and a half year development cycle and was supposed to be on shelves by 2000. At the 2000 E3, Chris said that it would be ready by 2001. Starting to see an early pattern develop here. That yes, same we year, are. Chris's We're very company, familiar with Digital this Anvil, started talks with Microsoft. <laughs> Chris said that he needed time, and he needed money to make the game happen. I need time. Okay. I also need money. Okay. I also don't want my vision for the game to have any constraints. Okay. Really? Sure. Microsoft bought the company and promptly constrained his vision for the game for the usual reasons. Time and money. <laughs> but it was out of Chris's hands now, and by 2003, Microsoft had had enough. Drop it. No. I said drop it. No. Let go of the game. Let go of the game, Chris. Stop resisting. No! The game was finally released, and Chris was left a bitter man, the experience leaving him distrustful of big corporations and publishers in general, which is a huge part of his commitment to crowdfunding. He came out of the whole freelancer situation. Okay. This is a little rough because we're 10 minutes in and we haven't gotten to the toxic community minefield that threatens Star Citizen's future. Situation looking like the hero who had been wronged by big tech and is leading the charge against evil publishers and the soulless company who demands that a game releases on time or at any time ever. In the process, however, he did build a reputation as someone who's difficult to work with, micromanages to the extreme, and changes goals on a whim. Sounds about right. So we can safely fast forward to the Kickstarter I mentioned earlier. With some good games under his belt and a carefully crafted image of the rebel game designer now brought to bear, the Kickstarter he launched sent some shockwaves through gaming and made a statement that the traditional method of creating games were going to be a thing of the past. What a rebel. 
There are a lot more details and nuances here, but that is the gist. Look, I've gone way down into the weeds here, and we're supposed to be understanding White Knights. That guy on the right is so young in that... So is... Look at Eren. Eren looks like a kid. But it is important to understand why it became easy for certain personality types to become Holy Crusaders for Team Roberts. It didn't spring out of nowhere. So by my unqualified analysis, there are giant office, two people working there, and they've grown out of that office. The guy sat down with your best man at your wedding. I cannot remember his name. He's been on he's been on uh, camera plenty though. There are three things that make the cult of Curse Roberts possible. His One, name's escaping me. Early on he was on camera a lot. The limits in game design. Two, a heroic rebel image. And three, Ash Canning, a really, seriously that name vast vision for the game. Bunch, though. Whether any of that is true or not is up for debate. The deal with Star Citizen is that it promises to be an MMO, among other things. And that appeals to a very broad crowd. Everyone from people who are bored with sandbox, choose your own adventure games, to the guys who have written Rob six Johnson. volumes yeah. of their own lore in the time it's taken me to speak this sentence. Hardcore role players. The player that just needs a universe, a premise, and a stack of G fuel, and they can take it from there. Whatever you feel about that kind of player, they tend to be the core audience that a developer will end up listening to more overall. Because You think so? That That's an interesting statement to make. That that would be the audience that the developer listens to more. I, I'm... That's just like a weird statement to make. I I don't know what a developer listens to more, but I think it would just overall be the developer will listen to whatever well-written and constructive feedback is out there, regardless who it's from. So I, I don't know. That was a weird one for me. That type of player is the most committed to whatever realm is being peddled tends to be the most vocal, and has a regular presence. And now we combine that with the horror. Because in our community, I feel like the hardcore role players are, they, they do tend to be vocal, but I think our hardcore PVPers are the ones that are the most vocal. But you can kind of say that they're our peers as well, in a way. Horrible clusterfuck of a business model that is crowdfunding. I don't believe for a second that Chris knew what he was getting into when he launched that Kickstarter. And it is with the benefit of 2020 hindsight that I can say that if I showed up in his polished Italian leather shoes tomorrow, I would hurl myself off the tallest building I could find and shoot myself in the dick on the way down just to have something besides the balancing act of crowdfunding to think about in those final seconds so i could smile for the first time in 10 years i wanted okay, to make a dad. diagram illustrating how <laughs> okay. running sig has to be balanced when it comes to managing the things that influence public opinion but it turns Jesus out the thing Christ. would have like six axes and i don't speak nasa so this is what you get the goal as with any crowdfunding <laughs> is to attract whales while still offering buy-ins for the rest of us broke asses and in that you can't offer undue preference to the whales over everyone else. Why is this a thing? Why can't we just make a good fucking game and have the game sell itself? Else, or at least not look I can't like stand you're it. doing that. But on the other hand, Sig needs money. Whales have money. There are two things you can offer to sink your hooks into a whale. Exclusivity and influence. SIG offers both of those things in the form of the concierge service. People who spend $1,000 are inducted into the concierge service, which offers, I guess, an enhanced experience and a kind of public recognition. Who here has an enhanced experience? Guys, listen. I'm going to start using these tactics on you. Because we need more tier three subscribers here. All right. So what I'm going to do for tier three subscribers is you're going to get a special space marshal badge. You know, a little a little forum badge, something special. And who knows? Maybe I'll give you your own picture of a spaceship that you can't fly.
Maybe that'll work for me. We'll see. Sig in the form I'll be full time in no time. A top hat and monocle like the Monopoly guy, an exclusive ship, and a number of other things, including access to Squadron 42, which I am Streamers intentionally actually avoiding do that, talking about. From there, there are a few more tiers, each with their own perks that go all the way up to the twenty-five thousand dollar Legatus Navium level, much like every YouTuber's Thank Patreon. You, Captain Rum. By the way, I have a Patreon. When you have a development cycle as long as Star Citizen and members of the community willing to spend that kind of I dough literally to just keep got a tier three sub on facial animations, rest assured many of those members are going to become entrenched and titled defenders of a game they are willing to sacrifice that much of their income for. So let me start to tie all this together. First of all, there is no formula for this and it is all my opinion, which is based on my observations in game, in my discord and a few subreddits. So make of this what you will. The hardest part of this video has been this one. How to sum up the traits and qualities of the white knight. The white knight is perceived as one who is able to dismiss even the most objectively valid criticisms of their chosen game. That old saying of he who defends everything defends nothing holds a huge glaring significance here. The second yes. you can't admit a company fucked up somewhere, Three, I am a company poor. you don't own, work for, or have any influence or stake in, you lost. Two, they are gatekeepers. If they deem you unworthy of joining their game and their community, then God help you. You aren't going to enjoy Star Citizen. Do you know how many times I've been told to just go play another game? Move out of the way for the whale. <laughs> Thank you, Norway. Do you know how many times I've been told by people of that community to just go play another game? Or this might not be the game for you or whatever. Citizen. Three, they have an inflated sense of self in relation to their influence on game development or understanding of the overall grand vision, which is a nice way of saying delusions of fucking great. Oh, see, dude, I really don't like this. Okay, the CIG forum mod thing is, man, is that a tough one? Like, I know some of those people personally, right? Like, Knight Rider, I know personally. I know Knight Rider is a great guy, but you have to understand the, the position he's in. The position he gets put in is the worst position of all time. You have to protect the interest of the company, but then also try to allow people to have opinions of their own. It, that's a, that's a tough one, dude. That's a tough one to be in because the company puts him in a position where people are going to talk shit about the company because the company has done bad things and has done and has made lots of mistakes that people want to hold the company accountable for. But then the company seems to be making him delete everything. And it's and like people end up hating Knight Rider. And it's like, ugh. It's tough. It's tough. Andrew. I don't envy his position. I sit here and go, and, and I, I think a lot of you would like to think that you would do a better job. I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible to a good job. I, I just don't think it's possible to do a good job on that forum in this situation. You're, you're just going to get hate. It's impossible. You can't, you're never going to win. There is safety in the belief that you are a big part of the game that you have spent a lot of time and maybe a lot of money in as well. But get it right, unless your name is Chris Roberts, your influence is almost zero. Basically, Some Zeus. view their yeah. donations to the project as an investment, but it is not. It is what I said, a donation. You have to accept that the only thing guaranteed... It's an investment, but the return that you get is not influence or um getting to say what you know should get prioritized over one thing over another you give money and hope that it returns a a better game in the long run it's i think people get yeah emotionally invested and, and they they change what the investment is it is an investment but it's not the investment that most people are at least vocal people are uh 
creating for it. You put the money up and hopefully something good comes out of it. If it does, it does. To get in return Most likely is whatever is won't. clearly outlined in whatever package you purchase. So I've just described every asshole on the internet, right? Pretty well, much. with Star Citizen, there is an extra tinge of urgency in the tone of the White Knight. Star Citizen is not a for sure thing. It is in mortal danger, and they know it. As a crowdfunded project, it lives and dies on public sentiment, unless it gets enough private donations to keep it afloat. And with this- But like, this game is a different phenomenon, because it has horrible public sentiment and makes record funding every month. This long development cycle that two sides have had such a long time to- Star Citizen may not be in mortal danger anymore, but if you look at the funding of the, you know how they do the funding or like their financial statement at the end of every year, they totally f fiddle with those numbers, it seems like a little bit. And I think every year they've been in the red, right? So there's not really a situation where you're getting, um, where they're making more than they're spending. So I... I don't like if they had a really bad year, you can argue that they would be in danger to attack each other and belittle an insult that it doesn't really matter what the truth is. There are a lot of people who want to see Star but Citizen again, we don't fail know, so. for the simple fact that it would upset the White Knights. And in turn, some of the White Knights and some of the Whales pour ever more funds into the project in order to see that not happen. So from six... If you really think the White Knights are pouring funds into the game to, to ensure the health and life of the game, uh, I think you're kind of ignorant. I think they're doing it because they're falling for the fear of missing out tactics and the general psychology that CIG uses against them to have them feel invested in all those things. That's that's just my opinion there, but whatever. But I, in my experience, when I have been negative about the game, I I've noticed that people have in the past have said, you know, I I don't like that you're doing that because when you say these negative things at the game about the game, like, do you want this game to be funded? Do you want this game to work? Do you want this game to come out? Well, you saying all those things will negatively affect that from happening. And that may or may not be true, but I'm not the one who's doing the bad things. Big's perspective, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but they have to know that at the end of the day, white knights are going to be bad for the business. If you hate yourself enough to delve into the arguments, but they're never back going forth, away. Head over to either the Star Citizen Reddit or the Star Citizen Refunds Reddit and feast your eyes upon some of the arguments there that will eventually make you want to start punching yourself in the face. It's hard to say who is more out of touch with reality, but the White Knights certainly have a competitive edge. Like, it's impossible to have an argument with somebody who is so incredibly detached from reality that half the time they're not even having the same argument as you. <laughs> it really reminds me of this interrogation I did in Iraq. We rolled up on this dude and some of his friends who looked like a bunch of homeless guys who were going ham with AKs on this Iraqi army position. And I don't even know if the Iraqi army guys were in there or not. It doesn't really matter, but they either cowered or left or whatever they do. So they saw us coming and dropped their guns. Okay. We took them without a fight. I picked the craziest looking dude because I figured it would make a good story one day. And he drew short straw because I happen to be an actual interrogator. Some gunfight, huh? Ha! What's funny? We shot at them, not you. Why were you shooting? No, not me. Them. You were definitely shooting. I saw you. So did everyone else. There's video. And you ask the guard when you can have your gun back. No. No what? I don't have bullets. Well, not now you don't. We took them. No. The fuck? No what? You are CIA. This is a plot. Okay. What's the plot? No. No what? 
I shot at them, not you. So you did shoot? No. The point I'm trying to make here is that the what Star the Citizen conversation that? is a devolving one the longer it goes on. And it is on SIG to provide a little bit of direction here. They have turned their biggest supporters into a Gestapo who have shut down any form of dissent, thereby creating one of the worst deco chambers you have ever seen in gaming. The long-term survival of Star Citizen truly depends not only having observed the insulting comments and baseless assertions being leveraged towards development, we're going to close things here. Yeah. Most things have base. And that base is, it's, it's uh, 2022, dude. On the public's perception of the project itself, but of the player base, the people that if you pick up the game, you are going to encounter. And if this is your most vocal demographic, then people aren't going to come out and play. SIG needs to eventually make the hard decision to start to police the people that are going around policing everyone else with a fake badge. Or don't. I frankly don't care anymore. Bro, you just made a 21 minute video about how it's a huge problem. You clearly care. But the, I will say this, I've watched like Xylo on the Yacht Club podcast. And when Joe Rune starts going Joe Rune on, on, about the game's development and i don't understand why people are getting so blah 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 blah. he's like like i've seen xyla be like we got this dude like we don't we don't need you to 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 defend we got this like I, i've seen him say that multiple times after researching everything for this video so on that cheery notes i'm gonna leave it here i have been mike canick thank you all so much for watching i will see you next time that was that was interesting. It was a it, it was a weird ending. Um but I thought it was uh fairly well thought out, especially the way he found like, you know, hey, white knights are not always good, right? And and how that they could have a real negative issue towards your game, but here's the link to the video, guys. Mike Kanick is his name, and I thought it was an overall pretty good video. I think, you know, most of us know the history, so the the beginning was probably a little bit slow for us, and the end was a little weird, but uh, the main point of, of the video was, I thought, quite strong, and yeah. White Knights.